Welcome to Conozca Sus Derechos, or Know Your Rights. This program is brought to you by the Hispanic Bar Association of Central Florida. It is our mission to inform our community of important legal topics affecting us all. And today, we will be talking about family legal issues. I am Henry Lim, the Community Relations Chair of the Hispanic Bar Association of Central Florida. Today, we will discuss various topics relating to family law, such as divorce and child custody. We will be discussing common mistakes and misconceptions surrounding these issues and provide information on where to go for help. We will not discuss political opinions as it is our intention to simply inform the community of relevant topics in a non-biased approach. During our program, we will hear from various attorneys in our community who are quite knowledgeable in the area of family law. Let's begin by introducing attorney Marivet Gonzalez. Marivet, how are you today? I'm great. Great, Marivet. Tell us a little bit about your practice. Well, I practice primarily family law and criminal law, um, but with, with regards to a little bit about myself, I was a senior probation officer for Seminole County for about five years. Um, then I pursued my practice in uh, law, and I deal mainly with paternity issues, divorce issues, domestic violence, anything that has to do with family law matters. Great, and we thank you for being on the program today. Next, we also have Gisela Den Laurent. Gisela, how are you today? Good morning, Henry. Good morning. Tell us a little bit about your practice. Well, thank you. I'm the owner of the Laurent Law Firm in Metro West, it's Orlando, Florida. A small boutique law firm practices in the area of family law, criminal defense, and immigration issues. Um, and we, we service Orange County, Volusia County, and Osceola County. Great. Now, we're going to be talking about divorce today. Now, divorce can be a painful topic. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about uh, divorce. Some of them stem from cultural upbringing. Some people believe that it, what they see on TV on their favorite television programs. The first, let's start off by talking about does someone have to have a reason to get divorced? Must someone be at fault? Florida is a no-fault state, so you do not have to have somebody's fault for filing for divorce. The term that they look for is irreconcilable differences. So as long as you know that your marriage cannot be repaired, you can file for divorce in Florida. Well, so we have some people who say, well, my husband was cheating. Uh, must I have, do I have to prove that he was cheating in order to get some benefits in a divorce uh, proceeding? With regards to cheating, um, like Attorney Gisela said, it's a no-fault state. So the marriage has to be irretrievably broken. Uh, family law is state law. So sometimes you get a lot of people confused because they haven't spoken to an attorney and they've spoken to friends and they may have the law and the information of another state. So it's really important to talk to an attorney licensed in that particular state. Um, cheating comes into play with regards to family law cases, more in alimony matters where one of the spouses says he doesn't have or she doesn't have the money to pay alimony, but then you find out that they have a mistress or they have another person who they're paying an apartment for, for example, let's say. So that's when it comes to play. But with regards to a reason for divorce, it's not necessary to prove that. Well, what happens if one of the parties does not want to get divorced? What can the person who wants to divorce do in those matters? You know, it's funny because um, the judges have the authority to order the parties to go to counseling. Do you see often? The reality is no. Most judges, because um, of the amount of cases that they take on, if a petitioner comes in and says, the person who wants a divorce, says, I want the divorce and these are the reasons, most of the time they'll allow the divorce to go forward. But there is, you know, if the person does not want to get a divorce, they would probably file a motion for counseling. And does that delay the matter if someone does not want to obtain a divorce? Does that delay matters as far as uh, obtaining a final judgment? It would because, one, if they file a motion for court-ordered counseling, the judge is not going to just send them to counseling for a week. They may send them to counseling for six months. So you're going to, right there, you're going to bait the process. Um, but if, if the court denies the motion for counseling, you're still going to, you already know they're not going to reach a settlement agreement, which is how you can speed up a, a divorce case. They're going to go all the way to trial. So now if you're looking at taking a case from filing to trial, you may have a year. Okay. Well, now, during a divorce proceeding, what happens when, let's say, one of the spouses is using a credit card, uh, a joint credit card that the, the couple had during their marriage, uh, without the other spouse knowing, and they run up all of these debts? Uh, does the 
person who did not spend all this money have any rights in the divorce proceeding? Well, when you're getting a divorce, um, first of all, you have to separate the marital debts from the non-marital debts. So whatever was yours before you were married, that's yours. Whatever is during the marriage is joint debts. And there's a misconception that only one person's on the credit card, where you're both responsible. However, if you feel that you're not responsible for it, it might, in litigation, uh, you might accuse the other person of fraudulently doing some charges, but for the most part, the law in Florida is all marital debts and um, assets obtained during the marriage have to be equitably divided between the parties. So even if the person didn't spend the money? Well, even if, this, if then the person didn't spend the money, however, there's some defenses, but that's for litigation. Yeah, I was going to say, just like Marita was saying earlier, if, if you have a cheating spouse, and you believe that your husband was using the credit card to buy presents for his girlfriend, then you'd have to assert that claim. And you have to say, you know, judge, he was uh, dissipating assets. He was spending our money on somebody else. I shouldn't be responsible for that. And if the court um, approves your argument, then they will backtrack those expenses. But it's very difficult. I mean, you really have to show that there was an intentional dissipation of assets. If, if your wife was just buying all the time and you told her not to spend money, but she did, you're going to be equally responsible for that. Okay. Well, let's say that I bought my spouse, before we got married, I bought her a $30,000 engagement ring. And a month after we get married, we're separated and we're looking for a divorce. Uh, can I get that ring back? The engagement ring, no. The engagement ring is like a contract. You fulfill the contract by getting married. However, the wedding band is up for equitable distribution. So I'm out of luck of the $30,000? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and not to mention that the, that engagement ring was purchased prior to getting married, so it's not even a marital asset. Okay. Well, let's say that during the recession, uh, I was uh, I became unemployed, and I thought, well, let me go back to school. Let me go back to school so that I can try to get a better job. So I go back to school. My wife is working, uh, and I become a doctor. Uh, but during the school, I had a lot of debt uh, for, from school. And now that I'm a doctor, I find someone else. And now I want to uh, get a divorce. Is my wife responsible for my student debts? Yes, the case law in Florida is very clear. Any debt that's accumulated during the marriage is, is subject to equity distribution, so it's going to be divided half and half. And unfortunately, many people have made the argument that, you know, he, he did his education he keeps his education, he takes it with him, I don't get to get any benefits of that. And the courts have said that, no, it's still a liability and it's going to be shared by both parties. Well, okay, so what happens when one of the parties refuses to work? They don't want to work uh, and they're not contributing to uh, the home and the economics of the home and it causes a lot of strife. Money is one of the main reasons for divorce, is it not? Yes. And well, what happens when uh, one party refuses to work and now that we're getting divorced, they want alimony, even though they haven't worked throughout the marriage. How, how does that work? How does the alimony issue work? Well, it depends. Um, you can reach an agreement. It's always an option in, in family law. But if you do not reach an agreement, people usually have this misconception, oh, I've been married for 20 years, so I'm going to get alimony. Well, that's not the case. First of all, if it, you litigate it, you have to prove that there's a need and an ability. That's the first standard. So let's say um, you both fill financial affidavits, which is required in a family law case, and you're both in a negative. Well, there's a need, there might be a need, but there's no ability for the other person to pay. However, if there's an ability um, to pay, there's a list of factors, and the length of the marriage is actually only one of the factors, is how old the person is, if there's any medical conditions, can they go back in the workforce, uh, what was the standard of living. So there's a list of statutory factors that you would have to litigate. I would think, and I don't know if Gisela would agree, but alimony cases are um, very litigious and they're pretty difficult. It's true. I don't think nobody wants to voluntarily pay alimony. And so, um, going on what Marivette was saying, the factors, the standard of living um, in, your, in your scenario, Henry, is important because the courts have consistently found that if you are overspending in your standard of living, they're not going to use it as a standard for the standard of living in the divorce because they're not going to force you to continue bad habits. Okay. Well, 
is there any, is there ever a time where alimony is mandatory? It's, there's no mandatory. It's after 17 years, there's a presumption for, but you always have a defenses against, and that's when the factors come in. But there's no mandatory alimony. So let's go uh, very quickly because we're almost out of time for this segment. What is your advice for someone with marital issues? My biggest advice is if they're children, please don't involve them in the marital um, issues. And also, get a credit report so you know what you're looking at. A lot of people don't even know what's in their credit. Um, and also, try to amicably settle. Uh, a lot of people, because of pride, don't settle issues that should be settled, and they end up spending a lot of money on attorneys like us. Um, but those issues could have been settled at the beginning. Great. Well, thank you very much. That's great advice. Uh, we will take a break. Stay tuned as we discuss many other topics in family legal matters. Welcome back to Conozca Sus Derechos, Know Your Rights, programming brought to you by the Hispanic Bar Association of Central Florida. I am Henry Lim, Community Relations Chair of the Hispanic Bar Association of Central Florida. We're continuing our discussion on family legal matters with attorneys Maribel Gonzalez and Gisela Dan Laurent. Let's talk about custody. How does Florida define custody? Well, the word custody was abolished in 2010, so Florida determines two things, parental rights and time sharing. Um, parental rights can be shared or it can be sold uh, or it can designate one parent to make um, the major decisions. But with regards to parental rights, usually people come to my office and say, well, I want sole parental rights. What they really mean sometimes after speaking to them is time sharing, because time sharing is what's the schedule going to be? Where's the child going to be residing? Where's the child going to spend the overnights? Every other weekend if, it, if they want that kind of time sharing. So it can be done without terminating the other parent's parental rights, because terminating the other parental rights, when you say you want sole parental rights, it's a pretty high burden. So usually it's cases where there's child abuse or things of that nature. Uh, also people, they have a misconception, well, my husband or my wife got a DUI. Is that enough for sole parental rights? Well, was the child in the car, you know? It always goes back to the best interest of the child. Who's gonna get the majority of the time sharing or with regards to parental rights? Okay, well, what happens, if, let's say that uh, my ex-wife decides to take my kids to Puerto Rico without my knowledge. What rights do I have as a father? Well, in Florida, you said the key word here is ex-wife. Yes. Okay? So that means that because you're ex she is your ex-wife, you have a divorce decree. And the minute that Florida has jurisdiction, there's a divorce decree that says, you know, how much time you have with a child opposed to how much time she has, you have a constitutional right to your time, and Florida has clear relocation statutes. So no parent, you nor her, can relocate with a child more than 50 miles without a court order or parental permission. So the minute she leaves to Puerto Rico with the children to relocate, you would file an emergency uh, motion here to get the children back. Okay. Well, let's say that I find a fantastic job uh, that pays three times as much as I'm earning right now, and it would be in the best interest of the children for me to be earning more money. So what can I do if that job is two states away? Well, you would have to file a petition for relocation. And a petition for relocation, if you were going to do it, please hire an attorney <laughs> because it is very statute driven and there's uh, specific things that must be in the petition. However, a great job does not trump the rights of a parent. So you might have to leave your child behind with the other parent if they have a relationship. But it goes back into the best interest of the child. And like I said before, it's not one factor. Usually people think it's one factor. It's a list of it, statutory factors that you would have to prove um, you know, with regards to the relationship with the parents. This time sharing issue is, is such a traumatic experience. It could become so, uh, such a drain uh, on the psychological impact on the parents and the children involved. And oftentimes we see that children want to decide 
who they want to live with. Uh, how is that taken into consideration when we're talking about time sharing with the children? Well, the court doesn't like to involve the children as much. However, Florida statute specifically uh, mentions the input or the, the, the request of the child, if appropriate. So what most uh, family law attorneys do is, one, they either involve a guided litem who will get to talk to the child directly and talk to the parents and make an assessment. Um, if maybe a parent will file a motion for child testimony, and that's considered by the judge. And if granted, the judge has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the child um, in camera, sort of outside the presence of the parents. Because, the, like you said, it's very traumatic. And the last thing that the court wants to do is have the child in a tug of war or feel like they have to choose a parent. So they try to isolate the child as much as, pro as, much as possible, but still get valuable input from the child. Now, what can I do if my ex-spouse appears uninterested in the caring of the child? So, for example, I have to pack a suitcase every time that uh, my ex is going to get the, the, the child uh, because my ex keeps nothing that's child-related in the house. Uh, do I have to pack a suitcase every time? What, what can I do in that situation? Well, you don't have to pack a suitcase. However, in some marital settlement agreements, it's as specific as stating the other parent must pack a suitcase. So if, that, if it's in the marital settlement agreement, it's part of the final judgment order. It's part of the order, and you can do a motion for contempt or a motion to enforce. However, if it's not part of the order, you can do different things. You can do a motion for a parent um, coordinator. That's really a parenting issue, and people that aren't divorced usually have issues with regards to packing, let's say, for summer camp or your school clothes. Um, so there's various things, but if you feel that strong about it, you can ask for a motion for some parenting classes so you can both, both be on the same page. Okay, and along the same lines, let's say that we have a parent who uh, misses the visitations. I had plans and the spouse doesn't show up to pick up the child. What can I do then? Can I petition for that spouse, that person's time to be restricted as a result of them missing their scheduled visitation appointments? Well, Henry, that's a very common issue. Um, and repeatedly I say, you can't force a parent to have their time sharing. Even if you had plans, you're just going to have to be the, the bigger person. However, if it happens routinely, that is substantial change of circumstances. And Florida statutes clearly say that lack of, of visitation, because child support is hinged on how much time sharing you're exercising. So if the parent is now not exercising that time share that they asked for, that they received in court, you can go back on a modification, have that time sharing removed, and then increase your child support potentially. Okay. Well, let's talk about child support. Let's say that the, uh, one of the parents is not paying their child support. Can I restrict that person's visitation rights? Well, you can do a motion for contempt um, for willful violation. Um, there's different things. You can ask for makeup time sharing. Um, you can ask for them to have a purge amount with regards to the child support. They can be incarcerated. Their driver's license can be suspended. Um, their fishing license can be <laughs> suspended and their boating license. But those are some of the methods or mechanisms that the court can use. You cannot, you cannot deny visitation just because somebody's not paying child support. They're completely separate issues. So if you did that, hypothetically, one person would file a motion for contempt for failure to pay child support, and the other parent would file a motion for contempt for failure to allow time sharing. Okay, great. Uh, and one of the topics that we see in this area is sometimes the issue of common law marriage. It is common in certain places of the world. What is common law marriage, and does it exist in Florida? Well, common law marriage is the principle that when a party in a relationship coincide, live together, cohabitate, that after a certain amount of time, it becomes common law that they're, they're married, as if they were married. And this happens a lot in today's society where people will just live together, they'll purchase furniture together, they'll put, purchase vehicles together, but they're not married. Some states recognize common law marriage, and then you could actually file for a distribution of assets based on being a common law marriage. Florida does not. So it doesn't matter if you live with someone for 20 years and then decide to get married, and it's something about that magical piece of paper mm -hmm. that in a year you get divorced, you have not been married for 21 years. You have been married for one year, and that's all the court is gonna consider. So that comes into effect when we're talking about alimony and things of that nature? 
Yes, because one of the factors is uh, the duration of the marriage. So during, say, a common law marriage, we amassed uh, a lot of assets, some debts. Is that considered marital property? Not in Florida. So that is key. If you know, if if you were living together for a period of time, um, and this is so so common in Florida. Let's say, for example, you live together, you get engaged, you start planning a wedding, which is very expensive, and you pay all the costs of this wedding. You put a down payment on a house. You move into the house, and then you get married. All the liabilities that were associated with planning that wedding and even that house is non-marital. And what effect does that have on paternity issues? Well, the paternity issues with regards to children, that is the, time, that is the only time when the mother has sole parental rights to that child. Um, the father, it's usually confusing because the, child, the father usually is paying child support through the Department of Revenue if the mother has sought out services, like gone for health insurance, um, and for some reason they have install, uh, instituted um, Department of Revenue action. Men are usually confused because they're like, well, I'm paying child support, but she won't let me see him. Well, she, he's actually correct in that instant. It has nothing to do with not paying child support, it's just that the man has to go to the circuit court and file a petition for paternity to establish his rights as a father. And the confusing part is the Department of Revenue says paternity is established, established, but it's for purposes of child support. It's not for purposes of establishing the time sharing. And when talking about child support, can my wages be garnished? Can my bank account be garnished if I don't pay child support? Yes. The, normally what happens in Florida is that the minute the child support order is ordered by the court, because sometimes you can make an agreement to do it directly, but the courts really don't like that. Um, if the court orders child support, they're going to have an income reduction order, so it's going to come out directly from your check. Um, if for some reason there is no income reduction order, if you're, sole, if you're a sole proprietor, you're self-employed, or you're not working, and that child support is accumulating, if you have an arrears amount and you have a bank account, they can garnish, your, they can freeze your bank account. Wow. And, and I have, what's very confusing for men, and I'm sorry about the, um, the year before, with regards to parental rights and time sharing, that was 2008. 2010, the child support uh, law, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> It's 2010, but the child support law um, changed. They gave um, 73 overnights is a factor on the with regards to the with the child support. But in regards to income deduction orders, they can't take more than 50 percent of your wages if you have a spouse or a child, and 60 percent if you don't have a spouse or a child. And five percent of your wages, additional five percent, can be taken out for arrears. Wow, incredibly. Uh, complicated issues. Um, unfortunately, our time is up, and we thank you for tuning in. I want to thank Maribel Gonzalez and Gisela Den Laurent for their participation in Conozca Sus Derechos. The Hispanic Bar Association of Central Florida is dedicated to community service, and in our upcoming episodes, we will continue to discuss family legal matters and other issues important to the community at large. We wish to thank Orange TV for their assistance in bringing you this program. For further information, please visit hbacf.com. Thank you for tuning in.